Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. I am All In Crypto, and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite altcoins. Whenever I speak to individuals that are interested in the crypto space, I rarely hear this coin be mentioned. However, that makes no sense to me as this cryptocurrency, if you're betting on the crypto space, you might as well bet on Chainlink. And we're going to get into the reasons why that is in this video. Chainlink is absolutely fundamental to the crypto space as it is how the crypto space at the moment gets real world data in a trusted, verifiable, decentralized way without a third party individual um, onto the blockchain. Now, we're going to talk in this video about how successful it's been within the realms of the crypto space. But just a few days ago, we saw a partnership with Swift Emerge in regards to Chainlink. We're going to be exploring and talking about that. And then we're going to talk about actually how Chainlink doesn't just have real world use cases within the crypto space, but it also has real world use cases on their own. And you guys will know that I ultimately believe we are moving towards a world where everything is tokenized. How are you going to trust that that token's value is what it says it is or the data, the metadata, whatever it is, is correct? Well, this is where Chainlink steps in. And what's the price of something that is validating trillions of dollars and has already validated trillions of dollars worth of uh, value? that is validating hundreds of trillions of dollar markets, like the debt markets, the bond markets, the which are the debt markets, the, the housing markets, so on and so forth. So I don't want to get too moon boyish, but I'm nothing short of excited on Chainlink. And I think you guys should be too. And hopefully by the end of this video, it will all become very apparent. Let's start with a clip of Sergey talking about Chainlink and why it's so important. Tell us about Chainlink and the, you know, projects that you've got going, hundreds, over a thousand projects, and, and the Oracle network. Uh, what is that? Sure, absolutely. So the Chainlink network has, pro has processed over $7 trillion worth of transaction value, and it's powering the vast majority of DeFi by providing it various key inputs such as data, um, automation, random numbers. Basically, it's an infrastructure that makes more advanced smart contracts possible. Uh, and so far, it's been very successful. It's the market leader in, in what it does. And it's been responsible for enabling DeFi to grow to where it is. And uh, various other sectors of the blockchain economy, like gaming and others, have also rapidly grown, grown because of uh, Chainlink's ability to provide key services. Big deal, ladies and gentlemen. Not only DeFi, the sort of GameFi sector, when we talk about Metaverse, Chainlink has such a massive use case that it actually, at the moment, is the main competitor Billing, you know, Chainlink literally has a monopoly on the Oracle um, space within the within crypto. Um, it has so many use cases to fill and that it's filling at the moment, but it has infinitely more coming around the corner. Remember what I think is going on here again, guys. This is a technological revolution that is going to change the world. And Chainlink, if you're betting on crypto, you're almost betting on Chainlink. It is that much of a big deal. Let's move on, of course, to the massive news that hit this week, and that was to do with Swift. Chainlink is working with Swift community and more than a dozen, let's say that again, a dozen major financial institutions on experiments to enable connectivity to and interoperability across uh, public and private blockchains. These experiments are a significant step from uh, the biggest financial players across the globe to link the world of traditional finance to blockchain. As banks endeavor to access multiple blockchains, Sergey explains a common connectiv connectivity layer across the various chains will uh, be critical building blocks for the adoption of on-chain finance. This is essentially what we're looking at. Now, before I let Sergey extend on this, I want to actually go over and play a clip of Larry Fink that some of you will be familiar with. We played this quite a bit at the start of the year, but this is Larry Fink talking about the tokenization of everything. Let's take a listen, guys. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. 
I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Listen, there's a big, big deal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, forgive me for that ad popping up. Um, you know, this is huge. This is really what we think is to come in the future. And Chainlink is potentially going to be what facilitates data, accurate, decentralized, trustable data for this entire ecosystem to work. We can already see Swift trying this out. Um, and ultimately, Chainlink is going to be that bridge from the traditional financial world in the same way that it's the bridge from the real world into the blockchain world. Chainlink is going to be a massive player, ladies and gentlemen. 11,000 plus banks, key uh, private key signatures. Swift has that many banks under their um, jurisdiction, and of course, line up large financial institutions. It's going to be very interesting. I had a lot of people say, okay, well, why does Chainlink need the token? Well, if you understand how the validating works for Chainlink, one way that they ensure that validators are truthful, so you have governance, you have a number of other things that, that, that the token's used for, you know, staking, so on and so forth. But one thing that the token is really uh, used for is with the validators. Validators need a certain amount of link to even become a validator. And of course, that link is always um, vulnerable to slashing if a validator misbehaves. There's an economic incentive for validators to behave. And this is how we end up with, and we have a variety of validators that all provide the same data, theoretically, meaning it's accurate. Um, this, is the, 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 this is the real use case for Chainlink. Um, amongst other things like governance, staking, so on and so forth. So, so Chainlink is needed. There's lots of uh, projects out there, of course, that I don't even think really need a token. Chainlink isn't one of those. Swift explores blockchain interoperability to remove friction from tokenized asset settlements. Big deal, ladies and gentlemen. We're collaborating with Swift Community Global to test how institutions can use their Swift connections to seamlessly interoperate with the multiple block. Uh, a multitude of blockchain networks emerging around the world. This is a industry that is worth just over $1 trillion. There are, in the derivatives market alone, $300 trillion plus. I think it's more like $600 trillion. Derivatives market, securities market. In the bond market, there's $300 billion, uh, trillion plus. If you look at even currency markets, there's a lot of money out there. If you look at um, balance sheets, there's, there's probably thousands of trillions of dollars out there in terms of value. Obviously, it's not all dollar, um, but represents, you could say, and this industry is $1 trillion and it's going to change the world. Just think about that, guys. It gets me very excited. Hopefully, it does the same thing for you. Let's finish things off. We'll finish things off with a little bit of price action, looking where the price of Chainlink is today. But let's finish things off with listening to a clip of Sergey himself talking about the banking sector, what's going on with SWIFT. This is an old clip, but became very relevant all of a sudden. Uh, and Sergey, I think, really is a pioneer in the space. So let's go ahead and play this clip, guys. So as a multinational, you're going to have many different counterparties coming to you in many different environments. There's going to be derivative-specific chains, equity-specific chains, trade finance-specific chains. And then that's even going to vary based on geography. So in each geography, you might have a different flavor of those vertically focused chains. And this means that banks will need to integrate with many different public, private, and consortium chains in order to conduct the transactions that they're used to conducting outside of them. This scope and size of integration, while keeping in mind that you need security while doing them, is, is really the problem. And that's, um, that's the problem that, that we solve. So the problem that we solve is how does a bank or any enterprise, any multinational enterprise, securely and efficiently integrate with hundreds of different chains 
with, without having additional security concerns and while being able to use their existing um, engineering um, kind of resources and their existing backend and even their existing APIs and messaging systems. So uh, I think the big limiting factor um, is integration and secure integration, which is you know what we spend a lot of time and a lot of late nights working on. Yeah, there you have it, guys. You know, if you can't see the chain link vision after just a few clips, I'm not sure what's going to get you to do so. Talking about the price, we know it's been a very turbulent time. But this week has just been like you know Monday rolled around and I was already tapping out. Um, but there's never a dull moment in the crypto space, certainly to a content creator's delight. Um, and this is where Chainlink is. You are literally at lows, the bottom of this range that you've been trading in right now. Chainlink has literally just been in a range. It's been deviating above it and below it and trading back into it. You are literally at lows here, guys. So we've been buying Chainlink since the start of the year. We're going to continue to do so. Um, we did speak about it in yesterday's video where we looked at three altcoins, not just the one, but Chainlink really deserves its own video because it is such a big deal. And again, I have absolutely no idea why more people don't talk and get excited about Chainlink. Chainlink is still 88% off of its highs, guys. I think it's going to go above and beyond those highs eventually. Could you see a half a trillion dollar market cap on the back end of Chainlink? Who knows? Speculation at this point, but we will see so on that note guys i'm gonna love and leave you if you've enjoyed this content a like is greatly appreciated so is a comment i'll catch you all in the next one let me know your thoughts comments and concerns about Chainlink. see you in the next one guys thanks a lot for watching have a smashing day